in this video we're going to look at two special right triangles so um, or two yeah two special right triangles um, we're going to look at an angle of a triangle that has 30 60 90 that looks kind of like this 60 30 60 90 and then we're going to look at an isosceles triangle that's 45 45 like that okay and the sides of these triangles have very special relationships and they come up a lot ish sort of and at least they come up a lot in homework. So it's good to have these kind of memorized or learned and stuff like that. So to look at the first one, the 30, 60, 90, what we're actually going to do is we're going to start off by drawing a equilateral triangle. So that's as equilaterally as I'm going to get. So all the sides are going to be, or the, all the angles are going to be 60 degrees. And all the sides, I'm going to make them two. And I'm just doing two because I know where I'm going with this. They don't have to be two. This is like super duper not equilateral e looking. Let's try this again. Does that look better? Not a whole lot better. Oh well, you get it. <laughs> so I've got this equilateral triangle. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bisect this angle right there. So I'm going to bisect the angle, which leaves me with 30 and 30. 30 and 30. So if I go and I take this triangle right here off by itself I'll actually draw that with real colors now 30 so up at the top or at the bottom here I still have the right angle up at the top I have a 30 degree angle the bottom I have a 60 degree angle the hypotenuse is still 2 and because I bisected this perfectly equilateral although it doesn't look like it from staring triangle then that means that this side here is 1 so the question is well what side is remaining well, now I can just use the Pythagorean theorem. I've got x squared plus 1 squared is equal to 2 squared, or that x plus 1 is equal to 4, also known as, oh, sorry, x squared plus 1 is equal to 4, also known as x squared is equal to 3, or x is equal to square root of 3. So what we have is we have this relationship that if I have a triangle, and I'm just going to rewrite these in bold, ah, not like that, not that bold, not so bold that I erased the whole thing, okay, um, in bold, beautiful, giant, red, beautiful, marky thingies, if I have a shortest side is 1 and the longest side is 2, then the middle side is the square root of 3, or, or any multiple of that. So if I have a triangle here and I have a side and I know that one of the sides is 4, and the other, or the hypotenuse is 4, and one of the legs is 2, then the last side is going to be 2 squared of 3. Or I could label them, you know, if I knew that this was, I don't know, 80 and 40, then this one would be 40 squared of 3. So if I have two sides, I can have the third side. But what's even better is if I only know one side, but I have specifically labeled as a 30. So see here at this top one, I didn't have any angles labeled. I just had two sides labeled. But here, if I have the um, something actually, here I have two angles labeled. I have the right angle and the 30 degree angle. If you just tell me that the shortest side that is across from the 30 degrees, if you just tell me that's 5, well, I know that the hypotenuse is double that, so it has to be 10, and the remaining one is 5 squared of 3. Okay, so what you do is you look at the 30. The opposite from the 30 is going to be the shortest side. The hypotenuse is the longest side, so it's double. And then the side remaining that's opposite the 60, that's going to be the square root of 3 side. So again, if I'm given something like this, but this time I'm given the 60, all right? And I'm given that this side is 8 square root of 3. Well, if that side's 8 square root of 3, then the shortest side has to be 8 because you have to multiply by square root of 3 to get there. And then that means that the longest side has to be 16. It's a lot more likely, however, that you're not going to be given a pretty square root of 3 there. It's a lot more likely that it's going to be something like, you know, 14. Now, what do you multiply by square root of 3 to get 14? Well, 14 over the square root of 3, right? Because if I multiply that by the square root of 3, I'll get 14, which is what I need to get. So I can just leave that as that. Now, you might have been told by your mom that you never take the square root or a, a fraction in the denominator. Sorry, that you never take a, 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 what do they call these? Irrational in the denominator to a party, which is fine. So you can get 14 square root of 3 over 9, but that's just more work and probably not necessary if eventually you're going to throw it in a calculator. Um, but essentially, you've got this 14 divided by the square root of 3. And then the top, 
or the longest side is going to be that times 2. So it's 28 over the square root of 3. And again, if you want to rationalize that um, denominator, you can. That's the word, rationalize. Mom always said, always rationalize your denominators before coming home to eat dinner. Okay, so you can put those together like that. Yikes, so that's embarrassing because, um, yeah. All right, so if you're getting a little bit upset there, yes, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is not, in fact, 9. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is, in fact, just 3 all by itself. There we go. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3. So again, another reason to leave it in this method is you're less likely to do something stupid <laughs> and screw it up. So it's going to show back up as 9 here in a second in the video. But just so you know, I did eventually figure that out. Again, if you are only given the longest side, and it just as long as I tell you what one of the sides is, and I say that this is, you know, 42, then that's the longest side, which means the other two sides, the shortest side has to be 21, and then the side that's opposite is the 60 has to be 21 times the square root of 3. So here are some particularly obnoxious looking triangles. It's really important that when you're looking at these triangles that you read what is given and not just work from instinct. You need to be really, really looking at it. So for example, in this one in particular, this is a right triangle sign. It's not a very good one, but it's a right triangle sign. I'll make it a little bit prettier for you. How about I do that? Look, now it's a beautiful right triangle side with everything perfectly parallel like it's supposed to be. That's the right angle. If it helps, you can redraw it, um, but you want to make sure that you keep everything, all the angles that are given and the sides that are given, exactly where they're supposed to be. So um, pause the video and see if you can come up with where those values need to be. And we'll pretend you've done that. So let's start here with this first one. All right, so we have 14. That's the hypotenuse. And we know it's the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right side or the right angle. So that means that the short side has to be 7. Now, this is not the short side because it's opposite the 60. This is the 30, which means the short side is right here. That means the remaining side is 7 squared of 3. Now this one, you might have been tempted to basically make it 10 and 10 squared of 3, which would be incorrect, so don't do that. And that's probably because you weren't looking at the problem. So again, we have the hypotenuse being opposite from the right angle is equal to 20. That means the short side has to be 10. Now the short side is the side opposite of the 30 degree angle. So that side has to be 10, leaving the other one to be the square, 10 times the square root of 3. Okay, now looking at this one. If it helps to draw it a little bit better with a more pronounced right angle, you can definitely do that. But again, make sure that you keep the 60 on the left and the 27 on the right. Now in this case, this 27 is directly across from the 60 degree angle, which means the short side is going to be that divided by 27, by the, sorry, that divided by the square root of 3. Now the short side is going to be opposite the 30, so that's this one right here. So it's 27 square root of 3. This one we'd actually benefit from um, rationalizing the denominator. So that gives me 27, math is hard, and by math I mean writing, not the actual math, 27 square root of 3 over 3, have I been doing all that? Yes, that's embarrassing. I'll have to fix that. So 27 squared of 3 over 3 is 9 squared of 3. All right? So that means that the short side is 9 squared of 3. So that's this side here, 9 squared of 3. And um, let me move this away a little bit. There. So that's 9 squared of 3. And that means that the hypotenuse is opposite from the... Um, the funky side, the opposite from the, what do you call that thing? Um, from the right angle. So opposite from the right angle is going to be twice that, so that's 18 square root of 3. So that gives me 18 square root of 3. Got it. Now for this last one that was kind of ugly, not ugly, it's a wonderful little triangle. It just, you know, I don't know, it has a hard time socially, you know, talking to other triangles because it wants to be like its own thing. I don't know. So you can kind of draw that out again if you want, but make sure that you keep the 30 on the right and the 42 on the left. Now that 42 is opposite the short side, so that means that the long side has to be 84, the side that's opposite the right angle. And that means that the remaining side has to be 42 square root of 3. 
Now, I promised you one more of these, and um, that's going to be a 1-1, one, one, and then seeing what the remainder of the, the last hypotenuse is. So for this one, um, this is an isosceles triangle, which means the angles are the same, which means the two sides have to have the same length. And if we're trying to find the hypotenuse, so um, you have the Pythagorean theorem, 1 squared plus 1 squared is equal to x squared, 2 is equal to x squared, so x is equal to the square root of 2. So this one's actually a little bit easier um, to put together than the 1, 2, square root of 3 thing. But again, the reason that you want to be doing this is because you're going to be in class and literally the professor is just going to throw something on the board and be like, okay, this side's 5, this side's 5, so we know that this is 5 square root of 2. And you'll be like, wait, how do we know that? Or they're going to be like, so this side is 5 and that's a th we have a 30, 60, 90, so we got 5, 10, and 5 square root of 3, and then we move on. And you'll be like, wait, 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 where'd you get all these numbers? Um, or they could say this is a 3 and this is a 4, so that has to be a 5. And again, it's knowing the Pythagorean triples and just... It's kind of like math literacy, is that if you're familiar with this, whenever they throw it up on the board, you're not the person going, wait, 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 where'd they get that number from? Okay, so that's why we're really learning this, is because eventually you're going to have a professor that like says, clearly, blah, 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 and you're going to be like, wait, wait, clearly, I hate that word. Uh, not that I don't use it, but it's it's frustrating as a student, because you're like, wait, but it's not clear to me. Um, they're assuming that you've seen something like this before. So this works very similarly to the other one, which is basically if I have, so we have this is 1, 1, and square root of 2. 1, 1, and square root of 2, which means basically that if I have my sides are 5, and I tell you that it's a 45 degree triangle, then by definition the other one has to be 45, so that's 5, 5, and then 5 square root of 2. Okay? Or if I give you a triangle and I say it's a 45 degree triangle and I give you a side or I'll give you a length of the hypotenuse and it's 14, then that means each side has to be 14 divided by the square root of 2. So that would give me 14 square root of 2. And again, you can rationalize that denominator, but do it correctly. Do, 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 and then get 7 root 2. Sorry, 7 square root of 2. I almost prefer to leave it in the 14 over root 2 version, though, because then it's clear um, where that number comes from. So here's some practice. Again, um, there's just a little bit less to do here, so um, you can kind of play around with it. And, um, ah, come here. Kind of play around with it and see uh, how far you can get. So pause the video. And we'll assume that happened. Okay, so um, here we've got a 45, 45. If you want to label the other 45, you can. So that means the lengths have to be an equal side, and then the hypotenuse is that length times the square root of 2. All right, here again, we have a 45, 45. This is opposite the 45 side. That means it's a side. So the other side has to be 21, and the hypotenuse is 21 square root of 2. On this one, the 6 is opposite the right angle, so each side has to be 6 divided by the square root of 2. And if you want, you can go ahead and rationalize that to get 6 root 2 over 2, or 3 square root of 2. And either answer is technically correct, just some people are going to be really adamant about not having that square root in the denominator.